Hello, everyone. I am so happy that we are all here together today and welcome to our Power of Positive Leadership webinar. Uh, my name is Julie Nee. I, uh, I lead our training team here at the John Gordon Companies and I think you all know who John is. So, <laughs> hey John, good afternoon. Good to see you, Julie, and many may not who I am know who I am, so it's, uh, it's great to see everyone today. Yeah, it sure is. And I really want to thank everyone for taking the time during your lunch hour, for those of you on the East Coast, to invest in yourselves to be more positive and become a more positive leader. When I looked at the list of people that were on and signed up for this call, it is such a great list. It's John's followers, but it's also a lot of people that weren't previously followers. I saw our, some of our current and former clients. I saw people in our extended network. So I see that there's a lot of interest and excitement and passion around this topic. So really appreciate everyone taking a few minutes to dial on. And I also wanted to say, I looked at locations. So I'm based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I saw a lot of people from Charlotte on the call. So hello to everyone here in Charlotte. And John is sitting in the Jacksonville, Florida area. So I know there were quite a bit of people from Florida as well. So again, thank you all for jumping on. Uh, we were just testing our technology before we started and we were having just a couple of little glitches before we jumped on. So I'm going to in, attempt to share a PowerPoint slide in just a second. Um, but just in case we have trouble sharing, I think you guys all know what we intended to talk about here today. And the three topics really are, number one, the benefits of optimism and encouragement. Number two, transforming and removing negativity. And number three, building trust and relationships. So I think with that, I may just wait to share some of the slides until we get a little further in. We did email them out to everyone, so you should have those in front of you as well. And then we'll pop those up as we go through some of these discussions. But I think with that, um, the plan is to really go through the three topics. We'll share some additional resources that we have for you as you go forward in your journey to become a more positive leader. And then most importantly, we want to spend as much time as possible answering your questions. We had Oh, almost 2,500 people sign up for this webinar, and I went through every question <laughs> to really capture what is most burning on your mind. So we'll come back to that at the very end. So with that, let's start with the benefits of optimism and encouragement. And John, why don't you start by sharing a little bit about the Duke University study? Sure. Well, Duke University, they studied optimists, and they found that optimists work harder, they get paid more, they're more likely to succeed in in business and sports. And what they found was that these optimists deluded themselves. They actually used the word deluded because they believed in a brighter and better future. They took the actions necessary to create it. It shows the power of belief that they were willing to work harder and give more and do more because they believed that the outcome could be great and would be great. It shows that when we believe, when we are optimistic that anything is possible, and then we have more within us to actually create it. And so there really is a power of belief. And there's also recent research on the placebo effect, that if we actually believe that a, a drug is going to work, it actually works. If we drink a, a hydrating beverage while we're working out, it, the research shows we actually have more stamina. We actually can work harder. So there is the power of the mind. You do win in the mind first and then you win on the field if you're an athlete. You win in the mind first, and then you win in the marketplace if you're in business. You win in the mind first, and then you win the hearts and the minds of your students if you are a teacher or an educator. So there is the power of belief. Optimism works. This is not just Pollyanna positive. This is real research that shows that we can make a greater difference by being positive. Oh, that's my favorite thing, and I'm so glad you said the words Pollyanna positive because I, in the past, have been accused of maybe being a little bit too positive, but <laughs> when I get that accusation, I just say, look at the record, and you can look at my numbers, and you can look at my results, and so I would, I would counter that it's, you, poly Pollyanna positive is not really a real thing if you're showing the results. So, and, I'll, and there's another example I know you wanted to share around that, so why don't you tell us about Alan Mulally? Yeah, Alan was the CEO of Ford, when he, he took over in 2000. And six, they had just lost $14 billion. He had them profitable in a few short years. One of the greatest leadership feats in history. 
and he defined his leadership style as positive leadership. And what he did was he really cast a vision of, of what Ford would be and could be. He created a working together management system where everyone would work together in a more positive way. And during the Great Recession, when no one was buying cars and they had done everything right, several years later, they were now doing everything right, and yet no one was buying cars, he stayed positive. He stayed optimistic. People were freaking out. The economy was like in a tailspin. It was a really scary time, and yet his positive leadership kept everyone moving forward. And he told me that, John, positive leaders find a way forward. They find a way forward. And that's what we do as positive leaders. We find a way forward through our belief, through our optimism. And when I think about that, I think about how many times we're facing adversity and challenges and obstacles and setbacks. And as, as leaders, we have a team that's scared, they're nervous, they're fearful. And we have to lead with that optimism. We have to lead with that belief. Same thing with our families. We have family members that are probably going through tough times and facing challenges. But just know that leadership is a transfer of belief. And so every day you are transferring your belief to others. Yes, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think maybe that's a nice transition into talking a little bit about Dabo and the overbeliever that he is. Well, I love talking about Dabo because, I mean, one of the greatest positive leaders I've ever met. And now he's just won his second national championship. Two national championships in three years. Think about that. Incredible. And yet people would think that it was automatically like that. But when he took the job, people said, who is this guy? People were screaming that he was hired as the coach. And when he walked into his first meeting, he brought in two signs. One said, believe. The other side said, I can't with the T crossed out. Mm -hmm. He knew that Clemson lacked belief. They had talent, but they lacked belief. And he brought his belief to them. And when I think about these championships now, when I think about this program now, what they've created, this doesn't happen without a leader who believes. He transferred his belief to the program, to the university, to the team, and to all the, the young men on his team. And he believed in them more than they believed in themselves. I've been around him a lot. I've worked with the program for, for seven years. I've, I've seen how he leads. I've watched his belief in action. It is so powerful. And I use him as an example, but, but I know that every one of us could believe that way. Every one, of, every one of us could have that mindset. Every one of us could, could lead in such a way where we make the people around us better. And it, it really just starts with, with that belief. Yes, you're going to have naysayers. You're going to have energy vampires. But Gandhi said, I will not let anyone walk through my mind with their dirty feet. And your positive energy and your belief and your faith must be greater than all the negativity and doubt. And he's a great example of that. And now the world could watch and see the impact of positive leadership. Because again, it gets results, right? Everyone was saying, oh, he's positive. They're having fun at Clemson, but you know, they're not winning championships. Well, now they're winning championships and everyone's saying now, what are they doing? Yeah. Five years ago, no one was asking me, what is Dabo doing? Now they all want to know what Dabo is doing. I've just gotten called from several major league baseball teams, NFL teams, college teams, all wanted to know how can we build our great culture? Well, I know I've watched it. And I've been a part of it. So it's exciting to see, but again, it's available to all of us. Absolutely. And I love what you said about belief because a lot of times when you don't believe in yourself, you think maybe you're not even ready for something. And I know I've experienced this in my own career when I've had leaders pull me along and encourage me to do the next role and the next role or a role that was so much bigger than I ever thought I could do. And this leader said, you can do it. And, and I, was, I was the one pushing back saying, no, I can't, no, I can't, no, I can't. And, and in, in this example, he said, yes, you can. And then I did. And you stretch yourself toward it. And guess what? You can actually be successful when you're willing to stretch yourself and you have a great leader who believes in you. So absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about encouragement. Tell me about when you and Dan and Jimmy were on a run together and you needed a little bit of encouragement yourself. Well, I also know about encouragement besides, besides them just working with you. I mean, you encourage me. You are a natural born encourager. So you, know, you do a great job with that. You're a great leader. We're doing this training coming up and you're like, John, let's do this training. I'm like, no, nah, I don't know if we're ready right now. And you're like, no, no, we're ready. We're going we're gonna to do this. And sure enough, now a lot of people want to do this training. It's like your encouragement matters. So it's powerful. But you know, years ago, I, I saw the power of encouragement firsthand. Dan Britton, as you know, good, good friend of ours, 
Jimmy Page. I wrote the book, One Word That Will Change Your Life with them. And we were at a, a lacrosse camp. My daughter was there as a camper. So I went to visit and I was speaking to the coaches in the morning and Dan was speaking to the campers at night. And so I show up and Dan is a big runner. He runs marathons. He was 46 at the time and he runs a six minute mile for the entire marathon. And he's like, hey, John, you wanna run with me tomorrow? I'm like, no, Dan, I don't wanna run with you tomorrow. He's like, come on, just five miles. I'm like, five miles? I haven't run five miles since college. No, I'm not running five miles. And so he and Jimmy ran the next day. And then that night, I saw Dan speak and he just truly inspired these campers. I mean, he fired me up, I was just so inspired. So I went up to Dan afterwards, I said, Dan, I am running with you tomorrow. That's it, let's do it. And so we get up at six in the morning. We are now running through the battlefields of Gettysburg. And that first mile, I was just so fired up. I was just really energized. That second mile, I was still feeling pretty good. But by that third mile, I was regretting my decision. By the fourth mile, it was not going well. I turned pale white. I mean, it was really scary. I don't know if it was because I turned pale white or not, but <laughs> Dan and Jimmy were now praying for me. And then they started to encourage me. Come on, John, let's just run through that tree over there. John, let's make it to the light post over there. Come on, John, let's just make it to that sign right over there. You got this, John, you got this, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And somehow, some way, mostly uphill towards the end of the run, I made it to five miles. I couldn't believe it. The next day I got up, my body was so sore, lactic acid all in my body, my legs, they felt like they were 300 pounds each. I couldn't even walk. But as I'm just like limping and walking, I thought about that run. And I realized that if I was by myself, there's no way I would have finished the race. At three miles, I truly believe I would have given up. But because I had a team encouraging me, because Dan and Jimmy were speaking life into me and encouraging me and believing that I could finish, somehow, some way, I finished that race. And we all need encouragement. That's what I've learned from that. I've learned from that in, in life is that we all need encouragement. I believe we all have a caring trademark and mine is to encourage others. I know the power of that. And so we need to encourage others and then we need encouragement from other people. And through that encouragement as a leader, when you encourage someone, you make them better. When people encourage you, you feel better. Think about the people who made a difference in your life. They encouraged you. So being a positive leader is, is really about encouraging others. The world has enough naysayers. The world has enough critics. The world really needs more encouragers. And I, I really believe we could all do that. What I, what I want you to do is at some time during this webinar or afterwards, just, just send a note of encouragement to someone. Send a text. Make a call write an email or on social media, just, just send a, a message to someone encouraging them. Let's use the hashtag positive challenge, hashtag positive challenge. That's a positive challenge that I'm issuing. And let's just all do that. Let's see if we can get the trend where maybe instead of negativity trending, we have encouragement trending. That would be pretty cool. Yes, I love it. Absolutely. And you certainly have been encouraging me quite a bit lately as well. And one of the things that I really wanted to point out that John was just talking about I wanna make sure that the group really heard this part is there was a lot of encouragement along the way and the milestones, just make it to the next light post and just make it to the next this and just make it to the next that. And I think a lot of times in business and really in sports and anything, we wait until you get to the very end to celebrate and to recognize people and to love people up. But I don't think you have to wait until the very end. I say, keep, you know, Celebrate every light post, every milestone along the way and encourage people and don't stop, you know, don't wait till the end, just do it bit by bit along the way. And that's what's going to sustain them. That's why you made it through the five miles because they were giving you these little tidbits to do along the way. And for the record, when I go for a run too, I count mailboxes. So <laughs> I totally, totally get that. Um, let's let's shift gears a little bit. I want to be mindful of the time. Let's shift gears a little bit to transforming and removing negativity because, boy, did we get a lot of questions and commentary around this particular topic. So do you want to kick it off maybe just talking a little bit about energy vampires? I, mean, I think it's a big problem that we all deal with in terms of negativity in our offices, our buildings, our, our teams. Everyone deals with energy vampires. And people often ask, like, how do I 
deal with that? How do I deal with an energy vampire? Well, first and foremost, you have to be more positive than they are negative. So it really does start with you and to recognize that they really do have no power over you. So if you don't have control of the office, if you don't have control of who you can hire and fire, you have to show up every day. And as Walt Whitman said, be convinced by our presence. So you just share that, that positive energy. Um, I know a, a woman who's a great leader and in her office, she has a sign that says, energy vampires welcome, expect to be transformed. And so she's all about transforming energy vampires. She doesn't allow them to affect her. She transforms and affects those around her. So, so that's the next key too, in terms of they're not gonna affect you, but then you also must uh, try to transform them. It's not about uh, removing them at first. It's about trying to transform them because no one really wants to be negative. So let's lead others in a positive way. Let's coach them, mentor them, guide them, and let's help them become more positive. We have to have those honest conversations that I know you're gonna talk about. And that will go a long way in, in helping others. And if that doesn't work, you know, if you do everything you can to try to transform someone, but they don't wanna change and they're just sabotaging the team. My, my rule of thumb is if they're sabotaging the team, and they're affecting your mission and your vision and what you're here to do. Well, then we cannot allow negativity to sabotage that. We work with a lot of school districts. I'm passionate about education. And if you have a negative teacher, an energy vampire on the staff, and they're affecting students, and we know that we're here for the students, and that's why we're here to help them become all that they're meant to be, then, then that person cannot stay in that job if they're gonna affect the students. It's just that simple. If we are here to provide great customer service, and we have one person that's scaring away the customers. Well, that person has to change or get off the bus. But we first have to try to transform and change. If they don't, then we may have to remove them. And it was best said by Veterans United when I was speaking there, they were talking about their culture. And they said, if we have to get rid of someone, it's not because we don't care about them. It's because we care about everybody else. We still try to encourage them and mentor that person while they're not, not even working for us. We want to be there for them in their lives. So don't just kick them off the bus out of your life, but you can still mentor them, but just make sure they're no longer sabotaging the team. So that's a, a simple framework. We, we talk about so much more in, in the book, The Power of Positive Leadership, and get very practical and also you know, in our trainings, but these are just some highlights of, of how you can approach it. Absolutely. I know. I think when I read through the questions for this webinar, there, we, could do, we could do this all day, <laughs> really, yes. if, if we really wanted to dive deep on how to handle some of these things. So we're just, just please know that we are going to cover on a, at a high level. And if we need to dive deeper uh, off of this webinar, we certainly can at a later point. Um, the next thing I think we really wanted to talk about is the no complaining rule. And it's a really simple rule that has two key components. And the first component is no mindless complaining. And if you wanna know what mindless complaining looks like, it's, oh, I'm so tired. And then somebody else, me too. And oh my gosh, why don't we have Starbucks coffee and just over and on and on and on. And you're just piling on. And so by the time you walk back to your desk, you're completely drained before you have even started your day. So all that productivity has just been sucked out of you. So part one is really don't pile on to mindless complaining. Um, find a way to walk away, bring up something positive, offer up a solution, whatever you need to do to kind of get somebody off of that mindless complaining. And then the second part of it is for every legitimate complaint, which of course there will be tons in life and in business, there are legitimate challenges. Bring at least one solution. My thought is two, bring two if you can. And what that does is it totally changes the conversation. So instead of saying, here's my problem, here you go, and I've now shifted my problem from mine and I've given my problem to you. Instead, I can bring you my challenge and I can say, hey, this process is causing X, Y, Z issues, but I have two really cool ideas on how to fix it. Number one is this, and number two is this. And then your boss or your team or your whomever you're presenting this challenge to can say, huh, okay, well, you know what? We, we, they can easily say, yeah, that works and we can do that. Or where they can say, well, you know what, we've tried that, but what if we tweak it a little? Or what if we can evolve it? Or maybe let's get the whole team together and brainstorm solutions. But it just makes, it puts you in much more of an innovation mindset with, when you can bring real solutions to your legitimate complaints instead of dropping complaints on somebody else's lap. 
And the next couple things, John, I think we wanted to talk about is positive conflict and difficult conversations. So do you want to take positive conflict? Sure. Yeah, we talked about, you know, having the difficult conversations and, and addressing negativity. And in, in terms of conflict, it's important that you will have conflict. You have to have conflict. This is not Pollyanna. We have to have positive conflict where we grow from it. If everything is Pollyanna and no one's deal, dealing with the issues, then we can't grow. They've done research and they showed that uh, great teams have, on average, a positive ratio of three to one positive to negative interactions. But if you get to 13 to one positive to negative interactions, team starts to fall apart because no one's dealing with the real issues. Notice I said uh, three to one, five to one, seven to one. It's not seven to zero. We have to have a little bit of conflict. We have to have a little bit of constructive criticism. And that's how we grow from it. My family, we you know, would consider ourselves a strong team, but, but we fight. I mean, we're not always positive. And, um, you know, my, my wife grew up in a, a fighting family. So, uh, you know, I grew up with a Jewish Italian family, a lot of food, a lot of guilt. My dad was a New York City police officer. So, you know, we speak our minds and sometimes we have disagreements, but we grow from those disagreements. And the key is not the fighting. The key is whether you have trust and love, which Julie's going to talk about next. But if after this session, this, this section, sorry. Uh, but if you have the trust and love, the fighting helps you grow. If you don't have trust and love, then the fighting hurts you. So it's really not the fighting. Now, I would venture to say that we're all in a situation where we don't need more negativity. Like, oh, we have too much positivity. We need more negativity to balance out that ratio. I would venture to say we all need a little bit more positivity. But just know that don't be afraid of having the difficult conversations. Don't be afraid of conflict because you have to be able to talk about things in order to move from like to love or apathy to passion. Because if you have a team or an organization or even a relationship where you never really have the difficult conversations and don't have conflict, then what happens is you always deal with the surface level and you can never become a strong team when you do that. So as a positive leader, you wanna encourage the optimism, the belief, you wanna feed the positive, you wanna weed the negative, but then you want to make sure that you have room for healthy conflict that allows you to grow. I could not agree more. And it's funny, as I went through kind of my leadership journey, for those of you who, most of you probably don't know this, but I was with the Hershey Company for 19 years. And as I grew as a leader, I really, really had to learn how to have the difficult conversations. And I remember at the very beginning, I didn't want to. I wanted to just successful people to death. And I think many, many, many leaders do that. We call it successful. That's kind of like the middle of the road rating. And if I just tell you you're successful, then I don't have to say any of the bad stuff. And yet you, no one can grow if you do that. Your team cannot grow if you successful them to death. And I remember one particular incident where I was talking to one of the people on one of my teams and I shared with him some feedback that was coming internally. And he literally said, what? I had no idea. And it was just that no one had told him. People had passed and passed and passed a person around and hadn't given them real feedback because it's scary. And I get that it's scary. But when I told them, told this gentleman the truth, he was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fix that right now. And he completely transformed and grew and got promoted shortly thereafter. So giving people the gift of telling them the truth is what can help them become excellent at what they do. So I know it's hard to have the conversation and sometimes you just have to force yourself off the ledge and just do it because it's, it's a way of showing people that you care and, and making them excellent. So with that, let's start getting into a little bit more talk about building trust and relationships. And I know, John, you kind of wanted to just talk about this whole idea of trust and relationships overall, and then we'll get into some specifics. Yeah, what great leaders do, what positive leaders do is they build trust and they build it through great relationships. They build great teams and they do that through trust and relationships. So as a leader, just know that your job is to build great relationships and you do it through trust. You can't motivate someone if you don't know what motivates them. You can't lead people if you don't have a relationship with them. 
And so wherever I go and whenever I speak to an organization, and especially leaders, it's about how can we develop great relationships to be a strong team. And as a leader, know that your job is to make sure that you are connecting with the people that you lead and helping them to connect with each other. But what is the bond that really, the glue that causes that connection is trust. Because if someone doesn't trust you, they're not going to follow you. You could have the greatest mission statement and vision statement in the world, but they follow the leader first and the vision second. So you have to be someone who they trust and who they want to follow. And I know Julie is going to give you some specific examples on, on how to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And one of those ways is really, you know, you talk about building that connection, John. And one of the ways, honestly, of doing that is showing people that you care, but getting to know them, getting to know the whole person that you're working with, not just the work person. You know, not, I know you're here to deliver the numbers and do this thing, but tell me more about you and let me learn about your family and what's going on. How was the graduation last weekend? And oh, happy birthday. And you know, whatever it is, just getting to know people and really showing them that you care. Another big element that we talked about here is say what you're going to do and then do what you said you said you would and really following through. And this is a big one for maybe I'll call it perfectionists, but people who like to say yes a lot, like, yes, I'll take that project. Yes, I'll take that project. Sure, I'll do that. I've got you. I've got it all. And when you say yes to things and then you can't follow through because literally the stuff is just spilling off of your plate, you don't have the capacity or the bandwidth to do it then it actually erodes trust with your team because they can't count on you to get the job done that you said you would do. So only say yes to things that you can actually follow through on. And that's gonna build trust much more than saying yes to everything and everyone thinking you're a superhero and then it all spilling off the plate. The other thing that we really talked about here is communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. You've probably heard John say this a thousand times, but when there's a void in, in communication, negativity will fill it and people are going to make up their own stories. A great example of this is when companies are going through change and reorganization. And when there's not communication, people start making up stories about it. And so, oh my gosh, did you hear that they're eliminating that entire layer of management? And I heard they're shipping this off to China or I heard this and everybody starts piling on the negative gossip. So as a leader, you cannot tell everyone, of course, everything that's going on, but communicate something, share something, and just enough to say, hey, change is coming. We are gonna share as we can share, and we're gonna share tidbits as we go. Change is coming, but please trust me that I will share every bit that I can with you along the way. So you can kind of let people relax and settle down. So just really communicate as much as you can. And also I would say around communication, it's not just like sending one email and then I'm done. Okay, good, I communicated it, I'm done. It's communicating all the time through multiple ways. It's email, it's live, it's based, it's one-on-ones, it's group meetings, it's text, it's phone calls. So really reinforcing your messages in a multimodal way, not just a once and done communication. Anything else you want to say on this one, John? Yeah, I want to say one-on-one -on -one communication is, is really key because what I find is that we live in a world of busyness and stress and people are just so busy today. And so what I encourage is one one-on-one -on -one meeting a day, that if you can just have a meeting with one person that you lead each day for just 10 minutes, it will be incredible how that relationship develops what you hear, what you learn, and then how you develop that trust and that bond. Again, in a world of busyness and stress, we have to slow down, make sure we're communicating and connecting so we get greater commitment. We'll never have commitment without connection. So those one-on-one -on -one meetings are a great way to connect. I just worked with a, a great company in, in Boise yesterday, uh, CBH Homes, and I was speaking to all the leaders and uh, had a little bit of Q&A Q &A session afterwards. And we were talking and I encouraged them to do this. Everyone left saying that was probably the one thing that they were gonna do more of, more one-on-one -on -one meetings with the people that they lead, more direct report meetings. And I've had a lot of organizations do this, a lot of leaders do it. It's one of the most powerful things that, that you can do. I love it. And it's just, it makes the assignment simple enough, just one at a time. 
And a lot of times you're meeting with your colleagues on all the time anyway and talking about business. The other thing you can do instead of just getting right to the agenda, hey, just take a minute before you get to your agenda for the meeting. Hey, tell me how you're doing today. What's happening? You know, just take a minute before you just go right into it. So yeah, the great suggestion. So one person today, guys, when you hang up from this, this webinar, go do it, go make it happen. Um, hey, I'm gonna try to just share my screen for a moment here and see what happens. <laughs> I had a couple of challenges with this earlier, so we're gonna see if it works. That's why we have to stay positive, Julie. <laughs> I have no idea if this is even working. So John, can you see my screen? I cannot see your screen, but. Okay, well, let's try this one more time. Positively looks great though. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully I can I see it. Okay, there's, a picture, there's a picture of us. Okay, yay. So hey, before we get into the Q&A, which we're gonna do in about 30 seconds, I wanted to just share with you on the line that we have, if you haven't seen it already through John's social media and email blasts, we have a public leadership event and train the trainer coming up in March. And here are the dates. March 11th is a public full day leadership training on the power of positive leadership. And then March 12th on Tuesday, we will be doing a train the trainer for people who want to be certified to teach this work. And really this is people who want to bring it back to their companies, people who are independent trainers who want to add something awesome to their portfolio and just really anyone who wants to be able to spread and share this message in a bigger way. So, and if just to be clear, in case it's not clear as you quickly glance through this, if you do decide to be trained on this program, the pricing does include both days, the leadership training itself, so you can experience the training first and then the train the trainer. And it is being held in the Jacksonville area, really Atlantic Beach, and just really wanna let you know that if you choose to come down, we have a great rate at the One Ocean Hotel and we have a room block under that rate that you can register under and you can even come for the weekend beforehand if you wanna spend a couple of days on the beach beforehand. So, and then other resources- Julie, someone, someone asked if uh, there'll be a discounted price for nonprofits and yes, there will be, uh, just to let people know. Yes, yeah, so feel free to reach out to me separately and we can have a conversation on that. My email address is julie at johngordon.com and we can absolutely accommodate that. So, thank you. And then I know I've had a ton of emails and questions over the last several weeks around other locations because I know for some of you it's hard to get all the way to Florida. So we will be doing at least two, probably three additional sessions this year. One will be in July in Southern California. Another one will be in October in Dallas. And then we're also talking about one in the Northeast as well. So we've had some requests for that. Um, we can also come to your location and, and, and do work with just your team exclusively if that's something that makes sense for you. So just wanted you to know that there are resources available to you to learn more about this and then also tons of free resources. If you go to powerofpositiveleadership.com, all kinds of posters, a positive leadership self-assessment, and then on johngordon.com, for most of you who already follow John, you know there are tons and tons of resources that are free and also paid, online training and different things that you can find on John's website. So wanted to be sure that you had that. And now that we are at 1234, I want to be sure that we really take some time to talk about what you asked for. And so as I, like I mentioned at the beginning, I went through all the questions that you submitted and I broke them into kind of some buckets. And so the four buckets really are managing negativity, which we talked about a little bit, making it stick, overcoming barriers, and then team dynamics. So we're gonna pick and choose a couple of these and answer some of these topics, but also if you want to put something in the chat, feel free to do it. I'm gonna, we're gonna to try to look at the chat and look at this and talk to you as well. So if you wanna put a live question in the chat, we can answer you live as well. Julie, I just saw something in the chat. I wanna answer this. Someone said that, you know, I have no problem, problem encouraging others, but it's myself that I have a problem encouraging. So I wanna let people know that one of the best things you can do is to encourage yourself like you would others. I tell the story about Dr. James Gills, the best advice they ever heard. 
and he's the only person on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons. And the last time he did it, he was 59 years old. And he was asked how he did it. And he said, I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. He said, if I listen to myself, I hear all the negative, all the fear and all the doubt. But if I talk to myself, I can feed myself with the words and the encouragement that I need to keep on moving forward. And so as we move forward through life, dealing with all the adversity, all the challenges, we have to talk to ourselves with those encouraging words and you know, encourage yourself like you would your best friend. Do not listen to the negative thoughts. Those negative thoughts are lies. And just because you have a negative thought doesn't mean you have to believe it. So instead of those negative thoughts, no, speak truth to those lies, speak encouraging words to those lies. And then you move forward with power and truth and you're better able to lead others in a positive way. The reason why we're doing this is because we know that when you feed yourself, you're able to feed others. The more positive you become, you're able to really have an impact on, on other people's lives. I was very negative years ago. And to be honest, my wife almost left me. It was that bad. I was around 30, 31 years old and two small children. And I had to change. And that began the journey of, of, of doing this work. And I used to listen to all those negative thoughts. And once I won the battle of my mind, I, I started doing this work and I started to share this message with others. And that's how I got into this. So uh, my mission, and I know your mission as well, Julie, is to really help develop positive leaders who will impact their teams and organizations and change the world. And to do that, you have to feed yourself with those encouraging words so that you can feed others. And it really starts there. And why we're passionate about this training is just because we're going to be doing all of that. We're going to be giving the skills and the application and the plan so that when someone leaves, they actually do it. Because keynotes we know don't always last, right? We know that workshops sometimes aren't always followed, but when you go through a training and you experience it and you leave, you're gonna have some skills that you can now put into practice. That's the key and that's what we're trying to do here. And so let's talk about some other questions that people have, but I just had to address that person because I thought it was really important to share because I know we all struggle with that. Absolutely, and I wanna just add two more cents on that. And that is, hey, this works with your family too. So I find myself doing this with my kids all the time. And I literally say, talk to yourself instead of listening to yourself, especially with teenagers and Instagram and comparison and social media and all that craziness. They have to be able to feed themselves with positivity as well. So just a side note that it works outside of the office also. Um, let's see, I think I'll take, I'm, look, I'm trying to look at the questions too, but I think I'll take how to have difficult conversations with respect I personally do not think that any difficult conversation has to be done in a disrespectful way. I think you can absolutely have a performance conversation with someone in a very constructive way. And here's the thing, when I give people performance feedback, I don't just go right in and say, but let me tell you what you're doing wrong. I talk about number one, here are all the things that you're doing great. And here's one area that's opportunistic. And so how can we talk together about how we improve in this area? Because let's be honest, none of us are perfect and none of us have the skill set to do everything awesome all the time. I want someone to tell me in a respectful way where I can learn and grow and get better. And so those, to me, I think you can absolutely have those with the most mutual respect. And the other thing is there, ask them for feedback on you and how you're leading and how you can get better because then it's you're building that trust and mutual respect between both of you. Yeah, Julie, let's can we take that slide down now and you can just look at um, you know, the paper slide because I, I think it's important to talk about doing it in a positive way. Like the Seattle Seahawks have Tell the Truth Mondays. I wrote about this in my book, The Power of a Positive Team. Every Monday they get together and they have the difficult conversations. Here's what you did wrong. Here's what didn't go right. Here's the mistakes we made. Here's how we have to get better. They have what I call positive discontent. They're always looking to improve and grow and they stay positive through the growth process. And so Tell the Truth Mondays is a great opportunity to, to share all these things, but they have a culture where everyone understands it's not meant to be demeaning. It's demanding, but it's not demeaning. Positive leaders are demanding, not demeaning. They have love and accountability. Hey, these are our standards. This is what we have to work to and towards to become. These are our standards. And you have to work to meet those standards. And if you're not meeting these standards, then we have to have these conversations. So it's done in a very respectful way of how we have to meet the standards, the culture, the values, 
the process, the principles, we have to live up to those. And then we have to get better in the process. And as we lead that way, they get better, we get better. Everyone understands this is all about feedback to help us grow. And it's done in a very good way. Now, again, the, the key is you can't have a negative leader doing this. If a negative leader comes in and just starts berating everyone and blaming everyone and they leave, which happens often, I get a lot of those emails. Well, that person's clearly not a positive leader and they need to read the book. And, <laughs> and, you know, and, and I've had a lot of people give their boss a book like, hey, read this. Read the energy bus, read the power of positive leadership. We have to try to help transform our leaders as well. We have to lead up. I call it leading up and impacting the people around us. Then lead around and then lead down through the, throughout the organization. So you may have to lead up at times. And I've had so many leaders be transformed because a positive leader who may not have been the top leader, but a positive leader in that organization led up to another leader and impacted that leader. So just know this, you can impact everyone. I know at home, I am second in command at home. I am not first in command. And so sometimes I'll have to talk to my wife and try to like convince her of something that we should do rather than just deciding it. And so that's how you have to lead sometimes. It's collaborative leadership, but that collaborative leadership is how we actually lead around us and lead up and really affect an organization. I couldn't agree more. So all of those of you who are on the line and you're fearful about telling someone the truth and giving them some feedback and helping them with their self-awareness, just do it anyway, because it can completely transform your entire team. Can we talk, um, about vent talk about venting. That's a question that just came yeah, in. Yeah, I was, I was just also on, on, on that, that on the side. Well. Do you want me to talk about that or do you want yeah, to say? Yeah, you, you share and then I'll, I'll share a little bit as well. So the question is, for those of you who are not looking at the chat, the question is when or who is it appropriate to vent to? Because sometimes it's what you really need. And honestly, I, I think that's another kind of example of not having this be so Pollyanna positive. If something tough is going on and you need to get it out, maybe you just go into a room and you close the door and you say to your boss or your teammate or and your whatever, hey, can I vent for one minute and then just get it out and then move to more of a solution minded discussion after that. But you, of course, sometimes, you, you know, you have to get it out. My recommendation would be not to vent to your whole team um, because it's really going to just spread that negativity to your whole team and bring people down. But if you need to have a one-on-one -on, -one on the side and just get something off your chest, I, I say go for it. And a leader I know, Jane Rawlinson, she said, okay, you can come in and vent to me once a month. We're going to have venting day. And she created venting day where everyone could come in on that one day and they could vent and get it out. And then after that, you weren't allowed to vent. Now, again, I think that's a good strategy. If it worked for her, worked for her team, that's fine. I also believe though, we don't need to vent. People say, we just need to vent. Well, you really don't because that's saying you have to get it out. But here's where the power lies. The real power lies in transforming what's inside. The power lies in realizing that we can control certain things and other things we can't control. The power lies in our perspective and how we see the world. It lies in coming up with solutions instead of complaints. It's recognizing that complaining can be toxic and it does exist. And if we allow it to breed and grow, it will, it will grow and affect our lives. But then you might be saying, well, that's why we have to get it out. But you know, years past, psych psychologists recommended punching punching bags to get out your anger. And what they found with children was that in doing that, that only promoted more aggressive behavior and more anger. It didn't get it out. And so you may think that venting is the key to get out the venting. Real, really, the power lies in transforming what exists inside you. Because what is inside you will come out. I used to be a very big complainer. I was a professional complainer. It was really bad. And now I don't really complain much at all. And I, I really transforming it at the level of the understanding of what's really going on. Oh, I'm upset about this and that's really why um, you know, being affected by it. My traveling is common and I get I deal with travel issues all the time. And so when there's always travel problems, I would I would complain. And now I find myself going, no, no, you get to do this. You don't have to do this, you get to do this. And so I start to transform it that way through my perspective. So it doesn't even breed and grow because you deal with it the minute it happens. So that's where the real power lies in being a positive leader. Love it. Awesome. Oh my goodness, so many good questions coming in. Uh, one I'm going to pull here is, how do you stay patient when you feel you're making progress toward your goals, but the wins aren't coming? 
So for me, I think there you have to find ways to remind yourself and your team what's going right. And there are lots of ways to do this. One is to literally create a bulletin board, a virtual board, a some type of visual display where people can say, today something great, you know, this is what something great that happened today and you just put it on the board and people just keep reminding and piling on all the good things that are happening. So even if you haven't hit the number yet or the goal yet or whatever, you can still see all the good that's happening around you. Another example I have on that is through a great insurance client that I've been working with in the Northeast all year this year. And the leader of that team was just so cool. Like they were on the energy bus and we were working through a bunch of energy bus things. And he had a day where he was not feeling positive at, at all. And he was feeling really negative. And so before he went down that negative spiral with his team, he basically sent out an email saying, tell me something good. And when he did that, he started getting all the, not only did he get super encouraging emails and all these really nice messages, but he started getting jokes and funny gifs and like all this cool stuff and it completely turned around his entire day so he could again get the team back on course toward making that goal that they're setting out to do so i think you just have to really have something very visible and out there about the good that's happening while you're working toward that goal people keep asking julie if uh, this is going to be available after this webinar and yes we will make this recording available to those who who signed up so it's one of the advantages of signing up and being a part of this is that you can get the the video of this uh, sent to you so you'll be able to watch it again and share it uh, someone someone asked about you know what do you, you do if you if your boss is an energy vampire it's one of the yeah. most questions that we get uh, the worst is for me is when someone says hey uh, my boss gave me the energy bus the entire team the energy bus but they're the biggest energy vampire of all what should we do <laughs> and that's always challenging for me because the boss will say, you're either on my bus or off my bus. And that's really not the intention. The intention is to love your passengers, to be a great leader that engages, engages your team, that makes them want to be on the bus, that, that brings out the best in them. So as a leader, that's what we're striving for. That's what we want to accomplish. But if that boss is, is not that way, well, you can't fire your boss, but you can hopefully talk to your boss. You can hopefully have a, a conversation with them on maybe how you work best, how you like to be led, how you perform at your highest level. And then you have to back that up, obviously, with your performance, but you can have that conversation. You can also lead by example. And Walt Women said, again, we convince by our presence. So convince by the presence that you have and lead your boss by the way that you bring that positive energy every day. My dad, who growing up, I guess, in a sense, is, is your boss, right? And my, my dad was uh, not very positive, being a New York City police officer. And over time, I just learned to be more and more positive over time. And eventually my dad would start to be positive around me. Like he couldn't be negative around me. You broke and, him down. Yeah, I, I also, I worked years ago, in my twenties, I worked for dot com and I had a boss that was pretty negative and he would try to push my buttons on purpose. I knew it. And so I just created a force field. I said, I'm gonna create this force field around me where they cannot affect me. And you know what? He no longer had power over me. It was amazing. And he knew it and it bothered him but he knew it and he started to change his attitude around me. Always know this, you create the world inside out, not outside in, the power is on the inside. And so you really do have the power to transform your environment. Yes, you may be in a tough environment, it may be difficult, the conditions might be bad, but, but you have the power inside. And I think it's really important to, to talk about that. So again, we've been talking a lot about negativity, but I, I, I wanna, you know, we should finish on some fun things too. But these are tough topics that we do have to talk about and that are real. And oh, I just, uh, there's a great chat here where someone said, I had a great critical conversation with a staff member last week. Noah had made her aware of her negativity and complaining in the past, which then in turn led to a negative perception. She got permission uh, to give feedback, opened the door, and it was a great conversation. We had someone who went through our training, Julie Wright, and they went and had that meeting with the person who was really negative and supposed to be a 30 minute meeting, but it was a two hour conversation. They did the, the, the love letter to an energy vampire, which is a letter of encouragement, a letter of sharing positive feedback with that person, the good that you see in them, and then going to meet with that person on it. So you had to find all those positive attributes. And sure enough, they had this incredible conversation, transformed the relationship. The person was no longer an energy vampire and it transformed the way 
this leader led uh, her team. I love it. And I know I, there's so many questions here about energy vampires. And I, I think it's a very real thing that everyone deals with at work. Another thing that I love to do with energy vampires is what I call getting curious with a vampire. So really just getting together with them one-on-one -on -one and saying, hey, I noticed in the meeting last week that you seemed really frustrated about XYZ topic. Is there something about the project that you're not aligned with? And then you might find that there's one tiny little nugget that they just hate about a particular project that you can address and immediately diffuse. Or you might find that there's something, you know, you dig and you dig and you dig and you, as you get curious with your vampire, you can continue to dig and maybe you learn that something really stressful is going on at home. And then all of a sudden you can say, well, you know what, how can I support you in that? And then again, it's diffusing, it's diffusing, it's diffusing. The more you show you care and the more you show interest and the more you don't just shut down and just allow this person to be an energy vampire, but actually get to know them and love on them a little bit, the more you can absolutely transform your vampires. Uh, let's see, there's one more. Um, maybe we can, it's 12.51. Should we do have this one as the last one, John? Sure, that sounds good. All right, as a college athlete, how do you balance the dichotomy of leadership? In other words, how do you find the balance between being a good leader and a good friend? The key is love and accountability. The key is to say, you know what? We're here to have fun together. We're here to, again, uh, do things in a very positive way, but we're here to accomplish something great together. And so we have these standards that we need to meet. We have this greatness we wanna pursue. We do wanna be great together. So I need to push you towards that greatness. And so love and accountability are the key. I, I had a leader who said, you know, we, we had a lot of love on our team, John, but uh, there wasn't a lot of accountability. So we were a really great family, a lot of great relationships, but we weren't getting any better, any better. We weren't improving each other. We were making excuses for each other. We had to become a great team. And so as a leader, you want to make sure that you're building a great team and a great family, and you can do both. Alan Mullally said, you got to love them up, but you have to hold them accountable to the values, culture, principles, and the standards. Donna Orender led with a lot of positive belief when she was the commissioner of the WNBA, but there was a lot of accountability there as well. Margaret Collins, who I wrote about in The Power of Positive Leadership, she created this school for, for kids who uh, the world said were learning disabled. A lot of school people in the school system said these kids couldn't learn. They would never amount to anything. She believed in them, but she had very high standards. So a lot of love she gave them, a lot of encouragement, but then high standards to accomplish something great. And these kids became lawyers and doctors and teachers and successful business people. They transformed the world, a lot of these people. One other example of a, of a great leader who was able to, to transform her team. And she did it through love and accountability. So really that's the case. Standards and then the love and support as we rise up to meet those standards. Awesome. Okay, John, I changed my mind. I want to answer one more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. So because I see Dave says, as a solo entrepreneur, I spend a lot of time by myself and deal with a lot of rejection. How do I keep myself positive? So I want to answer this because I really, really can relate to this. So I left a big corporate job about three and a half years ago before I joined John. And part of our work together is I am trying to close leads all the time. And so Dave, I want to show you something. This is a file of just 2000, like half of 2018's old and dead leads <laughs> that never happened. The file of things that are closed and things that actually happened is a lot smaller. It's actually awesome. And I've worked with some incredible clients but it's, you can't expect that you're gonna close all of the things. You wouldn't even have enough time if you closed everything that you started with. So I would just say, be grateful for the ones that come, bless and release the ones that don't work because maybe they're not the right fit. And in the meantime, don't spend all your time alone. Find networks to get involved in, in your area find online networks. I have listened to more webinars and gotten engaged, gotten engaged with so many learning groups online so I can learn and grow while I'm trying to build this business at the same time. And what I have found too is once you work with great clients and do an awesome job and give your best, 
they bring you back and they want to work with you again, or they'll spread your name to others. So like, South, say, like Southwest Airlines. Exactly. Southwest is a great example. We worked with them last year, Amy Kelly, who I think is on the line on our team. She leads our Power of Positive team consulting program. And we're getting ready to go back down to Southwest again and do a long-term consulting partnership with them. And honestly, for me, three other clients that I had last year were already working on projects for this year. So it will come. And I really do get that kind of working from home loneliness piece, but really find ways to connect with others, both live and virtually, and, I, and, and really celebrate the clients that you do have and love and do your best for the ones that you do have. And Dave, when I first started writing and speaking, the, the energy bus was rejected by over 30 publishers. And I still have all these emails I send out initially. Hey, I'm John Gordon, and I, I'd love to come speak to your, at your event, to your company, and so forth. I mean, this is about 12 years ago, and it's... Um, it's funny to still look back at those emails that I still have and a lot of rejection. And the idea is that you're always going to be rejected. There will always be people who don't see what you see. They don't see your vision, but you have to keep moving towards your vision. So your why is your key. As a positive leader, you have to know your why. And once you know your why, you'll know the way and you will not let obstacles get in the way. Remember, we don't get burned out because of what we do. We get burned out because we forget why we do it. So that purpose should keep you moving forward. My purpose is what drove me to continue to work at this and keep sharing the message. And I never thought we would do training or I had consulting or I would have someone like Julie on the team. That was not my goal. <laughs> that was not my goal. I just want to write and speak and make a difference. And it only happened when people started coming to me saying, I want to do this. I want to share this message. I want to put that out there. I want to work with clients. And then I started to get requests for training. And so we had some requests, and so those initial requests went to Julie. They went to Amy. My brother's uh, done some of our engagements. And from there, we recognized, okay, there's a need. People want this, so now we could offer it to more people. And so Julie, what she's talking about, she's building her business now and her own growth opportunities. And so that's how it works. I mean, you just keep on going out there and staying positive and find your support team. Find your stretch team as Dan and Jimmy were mine when I was doing that run. Find your team that will support you, encourage you, and be there for you. Mastermind groups are great. They're really great. We're going to launch a coaching program in the future where we're just going to be able to, to coach a lot of people, do a monthly coaching call to encourage people and help people who are dealing with challenges. We know that we're going to do that, again, because people are asking for it, so we're probably going to do that. And I want to make sure that you know people have the team that will help them be their best. So find your team, build your team, stay positive, and then, and then really just always believe that your purpose and your vision are greater than your circumstances. Love it. Okay, I think with that, we're gonna close this up. If you need further support, I think you know how to reach out to us. So feel free to reach out via email or through John's website or through me directly if you want to. My email address again is julie at johngordon.com. And thank you all so much for being with us today investing your time and we wish you so well on your positive <laughs> leadership I, journey. I want to say be a positive warrior. Be a positive warrior. Courage and you take on the day with that. Your optimism, your courage will allow you to create amazing success. So thanks for joining us. Rock on. All right. I guess we'll uh, hang up now. <laughs> Are we not? On no, we're still on. Let me, let me, let me hang up. <laughs> but, Team well, the well, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> great job, Julie. You did awesome. I want to encourage you on that. Julie, Thanks, I'm guys. sending you a positive cookie because you. Woo! Yeah. And then uh, double chocolate. Oatmeal raisin. They come out in uh, February, so I can't wait to send you one. You're going to love them. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Every <laughs> oh my gosh, cookie, I love the chat now. Every cookie comes with a. Um, a it's quote upside down. Turn it around. Oh, you can't. You can't. See. Oh, here it is. Every <laughs> every uh, quote, every cookie comes with an encouraging message inside. So it's meant to encourage people. So literally, they come out in February. Can't wait to send them to you. Boom, boom, boom. Here's I love it. Food. Oh, somebody said, <laughs> are they sugarless? They are, right? Oh, no, they have sugar, but uh, but they're lower sugar and uh, protein. They have protein in them. So stevia, though, right, John? Vegan and gluten free. But is it stevia or regular sugar? Regular sugar, but uh, but but healthy sugar. <laughs> <laughs> No, of course she makes the cookies. <laughs>
<laughs> no, why, because, because, why, because if cookies. it was if it wasn't sugar, um, and it didn't taste because a lot of cookies taste funny, people wouldn't share the positivity. So you have to be able to share the positivity. And so we need a cookie that people would enjoy. But then the whole goal, the reason why I'm even doing this is the encouraging message to encourage people. All okay, right. John, you got to give people the website. Are we still on? Cookie.com. Are we still on? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I will talk about that later. I'll, I'll share with everyone. It's positivecookie.com. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye.